Anyone who's ever spoken to me about wrestling for any length of time might know that my favorite period of professional wrestling was in the 1990s, specifically the matches in All Japan Pro Wrestling. Misawa, Kobashi, Taue, and Kawada formed the four pillars of heaven, and they defined an era and style of pro wrestling that came to be known as King's Road. A beloved era of pro wrestling, the King's Road matches were absolutely showered with praise and all the stars from Dave Meltzer and became a favorite among tape traders of the 90s. If you ask me, King's Road will feature a handful of the absolute greatest matches of all time. In fact, one of them I would call the undisputed greatest match of all time. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. It doesn't do anyone any favors to start at the peak. King's Road is a style known for its depth of history and callbacks. To be able to understand the greatest match of all time and appreciate it to its maximum level, we have to get an overview of the history of King's Road as it evolved through time. And so, that's where this video comes in. I expect that one day in the future, we'll talk about the greatest match of all time. But I want to take my time to get there. First, I want to take a look at the matches that led up to that point. Not just from a story perspective, but from a stylistic and artistic one. King's Road was a collaborative effort of all the main event wrestlers of all Japan who together crafted one of the finest in-house styles ever in the history of professional wrestling. This video series intends to analyze key matches involved in the development of that style. So expect videos on this to be coming off and on down the line. And don't worry, we'll get to the peak eventually. Picking a point to start discussing King's Road is difficult. Traces of it can be found through most of all Japan's storied history and the history of Puroresu in general. So I decided to start this project just a few years removed from the 90s. Let's start in 1988, at the end of the year. It's the finals of the annual All Japan Pro Wrestling Real World Tag League, a round-robin tournament that closes out each year in the company. It's at this match where, together, we will take our first few steps, walking down the King's Road. <laughs> Our featured players for the 1988 Real World Tag League Finals are as follows. In one corner, representing the Revolution Stable, Genichiro Tenryu, one of the biggest stars of all Japan through the 80s. WWE historians might recognize him as that guy who was at WrestleMania that one time? Oh yeah, he was in the Royal Rumble too. Yeah, 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 that guy. But if that's your only exposure to him, I'm looking at you, OSW Review. Then you can't really grasp the magnitude of what he represents to Japanese pro wrestling. He was a beloved hero to the All Japan crowd, probably second only to Jumbo Suruda at the time. In his corner, in the awkward animal print tights, is Toshiaki Kawada. Now, while Kawada would later become one of the historic pillars of heaven, he was far from that at this point. He had begun to make waves as part of the revolution stable, but in terms of the hierarchy in All Japan, he still finds himself towards the bottom. Standing across from revolution are two gaijin. American wrestlers have historically played brutish, brawling invaders in All Japan, and few men embodied this character more than Stan Hansen. Hansen is the quintessential gaijin, a tough, no-nonsense brawler who will beat the shirt out of you with a relentless, bullish energy. By his side tonight, Terry Gordy of Freebird fame, a big man who hits hard, a perfect companion to Stan Hansen. Within the first few minutes of the match, the dynamics are perfectly set for us to understand each man's role in the narrative. Kawada takes the initiative to open the match the fiery up-and-comer looking to cement his spot against the vicious onslaught of the Gaijin. His drive is no match for brute strength and size. Hansen and Gordy easily take turns throwing Kawada around even as the young man gets some brief hope spots in. 
As soon as Kawada tags Tenryu in, however, Hansen drags Gordy out of the ring, fearful of the more experienced and battle-hardened veteran. Here we see one of the running themes of the entire match. The more experienced workers in Hansen and Tenryu are always bailing out their younger partners. The pattern plays out simply enough through the first half of the match, where Gordy and Kawada are closer to each other in ability, both are more easily outdone by their older opponents. In fact, most of the time when either Gordy or Kawada are able to take the advantage, it's because their partners set them up for it. For example, Kawada's most shining moment against Hansen comes directly after Tenryu is able to soften the big man up. Then Revolution double teams Hansen before Kawada is able to get his shots in. Similarly, Hansen sets up Gordy for success in the spot that triggers the second half of this match. As Gordy is in the ring with Kawada, Kawada is able to fight control away from the Gaijin. He hits a beautiful bridging German suplex on Gordy and might just get the pinfall, but then. Hansen's brutal attack on Kawada's knee and the chaotic beatdown he initiates shifts the balance of the match decidedly in the Gaijin's favor. As Kawada tagged out just as Hansen attacked his leg, that leaves him on the outside with a busted wheel and his partner Tenryu in the ring alone to fend off both opponents. As Scott Steiner said, the numbers don't lie. The writing is on the wall for Kawada and Tenryu. The Gaijins have successfully eliminated Kawada as a viable threat to the match. They've damaged his knee and isolated Tenryu in the ring where Hansen and Gordy can take turns beating him down. By all logical accounts, the match has been won. And it's only a matter of time. And this is why we have fighting spirit. When people talk about fighting spirit, there might be a misconception that this relates directly to no selling, kicking out at one, popping up from a suplex, delaying a sell after taking a move. While these are elements that can help portray fighting spirit, watching a match like this demonstrates what it's truly about. Fighting spirit isn't about no selling. Fighting spirit is about continuing in the battle in the face of certain defeat. Fighting Spirit pushes Kawada to continue battling from the outside, acting as a thorn in the side of Hansen and Gordy, just enough to prolong the match. Every time he tries to fight back, all he earns is more pain and a bigger beating. Still, he doesn't relent. He pushes through the pain and a battered leg to bother the Gaijins just enough to show us the briefest glimmer of hope. Fighting spirit is what drives Tenryu to make his final comeback. A series of brutal chops and well-timed enziguris allow Tenryu the slightest bit of hope that he might just overcome the odds. He's able to hit his patented falling elbow drop and even nail Hansen with a folding powerbomb. But the numbers game will win out in the end. Gordy is able to break up Tenryu's momentum and drops him with his own powerbomb. In this sense, the tables have turned. The more experienced Tenryu and Hansen spent themselves fighting off each other that by the end, the young guns in Gordy and Kawada would be the ones making decisive saves. It's Gordy being able to break up Tenryu's spin that allows Hansen to recover just long enough to hit the decisive Western Lariato to get the three count and the victory. I love this match. It's a perfect precursor to what would turn into the King's Road style, highlighting some of the elements that would make All Japan Pro Wrestling so beloved. A simple but efficient storytelling, brutal execution, and an understanding of wrestling psychology that permeates every moment and segment that the match has to offer. Kawada puts in one of the greatest underdog performances in history, selling his knee to death but fighting back from the brink of defeat every single time. Tenryu plays a hero, taking on impossible odds, and Hansen and Gordy make a perfect gaijin force to overwhelm our heroes. This one gets the full 5 stars from me. 
definitely check it out if you want to get a feel for All Japan. It's a fun and fitting first step down the King's Road. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been another video essay on me about pro wrestling. I'm hoping to get more of these King's Road videos out down the line, but in a pretty irregular fashion. So the only way to really make sure you see it is if you hit that subscribe button down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave me a comment. Tell me what your favorite King's Road match is. And of course, don't forget to share this video with all your friends. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to see some live Philippine stand-up comedy, check me out on facebook.com slash thejosephmontesilio. You guys have been absolutely wonderful. Thank you once again, and have a good one.